On today's episode, we are installing the neck bones in the head onto our dinosaur. Hit it. Hey, welcome back to today's post-apocalyptic world to build a dinosaur, part 16, the neck and the head onto our dinosaur. So the first step is we need to continue our armature, which is the metal frame that holds up our dinosaur parts. And we're going to need to measure out another set of pipes and thread them and then install them. Let's see what that looks like. Hello, this is your friendly neighborhood T-Rex dino maker. And I thought I'd join us here and kind of maybe talk through what is going on on the screen. So finally, we, we get to install the skull top and the skull jaw. And here I'm standing on the scaffolding and the teeth are kind of fragile. That's why I have some cushions there underneath. And I've never done this before. It's not like you can get a manual on how to install and put an armature for your T-Rex. So here we previously threaded some half inch black pipe, which currently it looks like I'm finally able to screw it onto the flange on the ceiling. And now we're finally maybe gonna try to raise the skull. So we saw that the flange is holding on to the ceiling. I found a, a piece of wood, but I can only insert about two of the three screws. And the way I figure maybe it could hold up a couple of hundred pounds. And by my estimation, the skull is about, I don't know, 50 pounds or so. So it's not super sturdy, but it should be enough and a nice solution to installing the skull. So it's a one-man job in this case. And after having drilled one hole through the skull, we can see here that we can finally raise it and use one hand to keep it held up. And the other hand to find the mechanism by which it's going to stay up. So in this case, I decided to cut a small piece of plywood as well as use a small piece of foam to help with the cushioning. 
and it's a pretty tight fit. I think it was a three quarter inch hole through the plywood. And then we use what's called a, let's see what we have here. It's a half inch galvanized split ring tubing hanger, which is how I kind of put together the whole armature. They make it so that it'll clasp, clamp on to the pipe. And once that's held up against that small piece of plywood, it should keep it all together. So this is actually really fun to do. You can, you can see that I'm kind of struggling there. And let's go ahead and go back in time and see how we even came up with this skull. So I'm gonna talk us through this little video here. So it started out where we 3D print using our eight Ender 3 Pro 3D printers, a design that we found through Thingiverse. And once those pieces are printed, it took about, I would say 70 different pieces to make just the top of the skull. These here are jaw pieces, which I then use a 3D printing pen to put together. At this point, it's a very lightweight structure. And you can actually weigh your structure after you're done printing it. And it's 100% filament, which we know costs about, in my case, 17 to $20 per spool, which is 2.2 pounds or one kilogram. So I figured that cost about 50 to $70 right there, weighing, I think, six pounds or so. This is a really neat technique that I'm using to build other things and help promote my channel. And I think it's, it's uh, picking up traction. You can, from home, make big structures very inexpensively. And there I am goofing off. So after you've got your 3D printed structure put together with the printers and the 3D pen, now it's time to mix our mixture of joint compound that's going to be covering our 3D printed structure. And in this case, I'm going to use a drywall spray gun. And once you have your mixture in the hopper, it's, it, it's kind of like you point and shoot. It's kind of neat, it's kind of fun. And this is one way that I found to cover the structure. There's other ways, for example, you can use gauze and a paintbrush to, to spray on, which I do later. You can tell here just the weight from the compound being sprayed it on is actually enough to counterweight it. So here was the first time that the two pieces were joined together. It was an exciting time. And at that point, I knew that I could really build the whole thing. The T-Rex the skull being presumably the most difficult part. Uh, I went full speed ahead at that point. The whole project only lasted like a few months. Okay, back on the ground, we are installing the second part of that piece of the armature. So once we have one part of the beam nicely attached to the ceiling. This second piece here attached with a 90 degree elbow is going to be screwed right into the frame of our mezzanine, 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 mezzanine. And that gives it that much more strength and sturdiness in the future. So the way that works is a lot of this is a 3D puzzle, which makes it a lot of fun. And in this case, we're going to rotate this piece and then use another flange to screw it in. Okay. 
Okay, so what's going on here is I decided to bring in the jaw now. It turns out that the what's holding the jaw together needs to be kind of threaded through our pipe system before this the end piece gets hooked on to the frame. As you can see, there's a piece there that needs to go underneath and above it. So again, this is a fun three-dimensional puzzle and you kind of have to visualize ahead of time what you're going to do. Otherwise, in this case, I would have finished the armature and then realized that I have to take it apart so that the jaw can probably pro properly go in. At the beginning of this day, now this whole process here only took about 20-25 minutes, but I thought I was going to build the neck first. And when I thought about that further, then I realized that, no, I need to put the head in first. And the reason we put in the head first is because I wasn't sure exactly how the neck was going to look. So if we put the head on first where it's supposed to be, then we can kind of adjust how the neck is going to look. I don't know. That's how it, that's what I came up with. So I was saying that in this case, we need to be able to visualize what we're doing as we're doing it, because I actually hadn't designed this in advance. You kind of go, go with the flow and sometimes we get lucky. And here we have our supervisor, always ready to help. You'll notice I'm kind of moving slowly Again, we don't want to jerk it too much and possibly have something fall. And also because after the painting, there isn't a major hard covering like resin on top of the skull. You can see all those white spots is where it actually rubs against something or breaks a little bit, which we'll simply paint over at the end. So we kind of want to tread lightly and be careful to do minimal damage. As well as for safety reasons, we don't kind of want to fall or break something on the human that's trying to work on this.
Well, that's about all I could fit in this video. I hope you're enjoying this series. We're kind of winding down at this point. Next time, I promise, we'll get to the neck, how we built it, how we installed it, how we painted it. And after that, we will have one more video, maybe about the world famous T-Rex tiny arms and clavicle. But don't you worry, I've got a lot of other great videos down the pike. So if you like what you like, please like and subscribe. And we will see you next time on Dave's Post-Apocalyptic World.